Hey guys, we are back from Hawaii, but while we were there, I put some of the newest and hottest camera models like the Sony a7 III and Canon's 5D Mark IV um, to the test to see what camera is actually the best camera for travel photography or video. So there's a lot of different factors to take into consideration when looking to buy a camera for travel photography. You have to first create a budget so you know how much you can spend on your camera and your lenses. Um, the size and uh, portability of the camera and lens that you're going to be using. Functionality, so like what are you going to be using it for? Are you going to be using it for just video? Are you going to be taking video and photos? Are you just going to be taking photos? That plays a big part in what you're camera model you should use and then also um, your experience level as a photographer or videographer. Some cameras are just way more easy to use straight out of the box uh, than some of the higher end pro level um, cameras that are currently on the market. So they say the bit best camera is the one that you have with you and the one that everyone always has with them is this one, the iPhone or Samsung or whatever you use, your smartphone basically. So this has a 12 megapixel camera sensor in, in it. Um, it can do wide or telephoto and with different apps like Camera Pro or the camera within the Light, Adobe Lightroom app, you can shoot raw photos making it way more powerful than just the, the standard Apple JPEG camera app. If you're just starting out, um, there's not really any reason to carry anything besides your phone because with that, the apps I mentioned, Camera Pro and the Lightroom camera, you can shoot raw and adjust the shutter speed and the ISO. It doesn't let you control the aperture, but um, there's some really powerful um, capabilities just on your phone and you always have that with you so if you're just starting out trying to learn a little bit about what the ISO and shutter speed and how that affects your image I'd say that the best camera for you would be just your cell phone. The second camera that I think a lot of people would find useful as a travel camera would be GoPro's latest release the Hero 6. Um, also 12 megapixel sensor, can do slow-mo video up to 240 frames per second at full HD, which is pretty incredible. Uh, for video, the in-body in stabilization factors that they've uh, included in this latest model are pretty great. So even if you're not using um, the Karma Grip that you can also get from GoPro, the, the stabilization on your videos will be pretty good with just walking around like this. Um, one thing I don't really like about it is you can't really adjust the, the image when you're just taking still images to, to your liking. So you can change the shutter speed a little bit, you can change the ISO range, but you really can't adjust a photo where you can get that crispy depth of field that everything is going to be really wide. Um, wide depth of field, super, you could see everything will be pretty much in focus from front to back. Sometimes I do use the Karma Grip for video with the GoPro, but on this trip to Hawaii, I have to be honest, the, the GoPro stayed in the bag. I brought it with me just in case, but with the other cameras that I was using and their capabilities, uh, the GoPro kind of was just not a match for them. Okay, now switching gears to interchangeable lens cameras. It's kind of what people think of when um, they're thinking of better cameras, so you can actually take the lens off and put different lenses on. Um, the first one I'm going to be talking about is the Sony A6000. This was the first interchangeable lens camera that I got when I started getting really into photography, and it's still a very capable camera. It has an APS-C APS -C sensor, um, which means the image is cropped 
um, 1.6 times compared to the full frame that uh, I'm using to, to shoot this. So when it says 16 to 50, it's probably, if it was on a full frame camera, it'd be more like probably 24 to 70 or something like that. So this is kind of the basic kit lens that you get with any of these um, 6,000 level cameras. Uh, Sony's made three versions, the 6300 6, and the 6500. Both of those have 4K video. This one just has 1080p. Um, but you can get this for 550 bucks with the lens. So it's definitely an affordable option if you're looking to get more into photography or video because you can shoot manual, you can shoot raw, you can learn how to all the settings affect each other with this camera. And it's, I mean, this camera itself is lighter than this lens that goes on the Canon. So it's definitely a really great option for someone who's looking to kind of dip their toes into a, a more advanced photography setting. Canon has also recently started developing uh, their mirrorless, mirrorless camera line. So you can get one of their M line models with a lens from between about 600 to 1200 bucks, depending on which model you get. Um, the higher end models uh, are pretty uh, pretty solid compared to the the next camera that I'm going to be talking about, the Sony A7 III. But um, the the part where Canon is kind of lagged behind Sony is their uh, frame rate capabilities and 4K capabilities. So while the cameras might have 4K, it's usually a, a cropped 4K where it, it will zoom the image in. Even this this uh, the Canon 5D Mark IV, which I'm shooting this on, uh, when you're shooting in 4K, it crops it in a little bit. So um, that's the only, really the only place that I think Canon is lagging behind Sony. So I rented the Sony A7 Mark III and Sony uh, 70 to, or 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens from um, lensrentals.com for our Hawaii trip pretty much for the sole purpose of reviewing it on this uh, this post here um, full frame sensor the body itself weighs less than two pounds which is great except for when you put the this lens on it it becomes a five pound camera just like uh, the regular Canon one that I use. So this, the body of this camera will set you back about $2,000. And then the lens that I have here, the 24 to 70 GM will also set you back another $2,200. So all in with this um, pretty versatile kit setup, you're looking at about just about $4,200. Um, but with lensrentals.com, if you're kind of not sure what you want, but you want to try something out, that's a great option. This isn't sponsored. I use them all the time for uh, different lenses. This is the first camera I've rented, but I also rented the, the brand new Sigma 14-24 to for my Canon camera for this Hawaii trip. And it ended up being amazing, especially for the underwater camera shots. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but this is definitely a video powerhouse for the, the price you pay for it. Uh, you can get 4K video, you can get full HD up to 120 frames per second, which gives you that silky smooth uh, slow motion for your B-roll. Um, the one downside about Sony lenses or Sony cameras is their lenses. Um, there's not a huge variety of third-party lenses available for you to use. With can but my Canon camera, I use uh, the Sigma 35 is pretty much my go-to, but I also use uh, the Tamron 7200, and like I said, I rented the other Sigma 14 to 24 for this Hawaii trip. So the I really don't use any Canon brand lenses, um, which actually saves me a boatload of money, considering that the comparable Canon lenses to the Sigmas are more than twice as much money. Um, the other thing I don't really like about the Sony um, is the user experience. So I found the menus to be 
not quite as intuitive and the, the setup to be not quite as intuitive as the camp, Canon camera, which I was able to pretty much operate intuitively right out of the box. This one, I it took me a, a good hour to get it set up the way that I kind of like it. And even still, after two weeks with shooting with it, I was still messing up the couple of the settings, which made me miss a couple shots that I would have rather, that I would, definitely would have gotten if I was shooting on my Canon. Um, I don't like that there's no touch screen. I mean, it's 2018, touch screen for autofocus would make my life so much easier rather than trying to toggle the autofocus with this little tiny joystick here. Um, but other than that, it's definitely a very capable, high quality camera. You could, I, I mean, I'm going to have a Hawaii video coming out probably next week. And most of that video was shot on this, this camera here. So it's definitely, if you're focused more on video than photos, I would lean towards the Sony, but, um, just the user experience for me was a, something that's lagging behind Canon. One other thing about the Sony is there's no built-in intervalometer. So if you're wanting to take a time lapse or um, set up a basically a interval shooting where it'll take a picture every two to five seconds, uh, so you can be in it too if you're shooting on a tripod, uh, you're gonna have to use an external in intervalometer for that. Um, whereas the Canon has a built-in interval armor, so it's just much more convenient, one less thing I have to carry when I'm traveling. Last but not least, the camera I use for every day, the photos that you see on Instagram, anything I do with when I'm working with a brand or anything is my trusty Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, got this about a year and a half ago for Christmas and pretty much haven't looked back. Um, it's super intuitive to use. I was able to operate it pretty much right out of the box. Um, it just, it, I like the solid, it's a little bit heavier than the Sony, but I like the solid feel about it. Gives, feels like I have more control over my angles and everything when I'm shooting. Um, I love the Canons because there's so much more uh, opportunity for using less expensive yet still high quality um, lenses from third party manufacturers like the Sigmas and the Tamrons uh, that I've mentioned. Um, for Sony, they, Sigma makes prime lenses, um, but you're, they're still missing out on that versatility that the 24 to 70 um, or the 70 to 200 millimeter options that allow you to get away with pretty much only carrying two lenses in your bag if you're traveling. Um, when you look at this, if you, right out of the box, it, it, the body's a little bit bigger than the Sony, but um, once you put a lens on, they're about the same length this way and um, really about the same weight too. This has a little bit more balance to it because the body is a little bit heavier and the lens is a little bit lighter. So it's not um, kind of falling down in my hand like the Sony does or when I was wearing the Sony around my neck, it was kind of pulling down rather than sitting flat like this. So that's another thing to take in consideration, being comfortable if you're carrying around a camera all day when you're out traveling and shooting. So um, definitely think about that and how the, the weight of the front lens will affect when it's balanced with the lighter body of, like of a Sony um, mirrorless camera. I love that the Canon has a touch screen back here so I can tap to focus when I'm shooting a video or if I'm shooting in live view, I can tap and it'll immediately focus on the subject I tap on. Uh, has a full frame sensor and puts out a pretty huge image. So an uh, image that's definitely big enough to throw up on a billboard or crop down real small if you need to. Uh, everything throughout is super sharp. I love uh, the image quality and dynamic range that you get with the Canon cameras. The only downside about the Canon cameras is the video, you can only shoot full HD up to 60 frames a second. 
Um, so you, you get slow-mo, but it's not as smooth or slow as what you'd get on the Sony model. This, the body of this is now on sale for about $3,000 or $3,100. So it's, it's a good thousand dollars more expensive than the, the Sony one we just talked about. Um, but the capabilities that you have with the, the third party lens manufacturers make it, it might be even less expensive at some points. If you say you get the Sigma 35 millimeter lens, which runs about $900, um, couple with this, so you're at 3,900, but if you get the, the Sony camera, which is 2,000, and then the Sony lens, which is another 2,200, then, I mean, the Canon, the bigger body is a couple, couple hundred dollars less expensive. I hope this video has been helpful, give you some ideas of what kind of camera suits you best. Um, you really just have to decide what your budget is and what you're going to be using it for. Um, gives you a bunch of options of what to look for um, when you're trying to decide which camera to pick. Um, make sure you're following us on Instagram. I'm going to have a Hawaii video coming very soon. Um, and subscribe if you like this. I think I'm going to do more content around cameras because I'm finding myself playing with different kinds more and more and talking to my friends that use different uh, gear than I do to see what actually is best for uh, pretty much every scenario. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed.